And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about the basics of splinting. And one of the biggest things that we are emphasizing with this back to basic segment on splinting is that you can do it yourself. And in fact, you can probably do it faster than some of the people on your unit. And I don't mean that in the sense that they don't have the experience or the ability, but the fact is that you ask them to do it and the splint may take up to an hour to even be applied when you can easily do it in less than five minutes, especially with ortho glass. So in this segment today, we're going to show you how to use ortho glass um, for a radial uh, gutter splint, which is one of the simplest splints to apply. Uh, depending on if your patient is in pain or if the fracture is complicated and needs more than two hands, uh, you may need a partner to hold the hand or wrist steady while you place the splint. And I'm just showing you two types of gutter splints here. Basically one is a little bit soft because we just got it wet and it's just hardening. And this one here is hard and it's already dried. Um, one of the important things to remember is that when you apply ortho glass, it takes about 15 minutes to set. So you're gonna have to check your uh, PMS before and after knowing that it's 100% set and ready and dry before that patient walks out the door. Carlin's going to talk to us a little bit about the application of the splint and the basics. Keep in mind that practice makes perfect for these and you're going to adapt some of your own special uh, ways of application. One of the paramedics here, I am splinting the right side of radial fracture. We're going to measure from the tip of the thumb down to about the elbow. All right, before we put the splint on, we check PMS, make sure they can feel everything because we want to make sure that's intact before we put the splint on. Measured, we're going to use our ortho glass. So the big thing is this is the chip clip. It makes sure that the stuff isn't um, dry on the inside. So we have to make sure that's in place. If that's not in place, you're going to feel that it's really hard. So you'll have to extend where you put your material to measure with. All right, so after. We cut the length that we need. So this can air dry, but it dries faster and hardens faster if you get it wet. So it's important to put the chip clip back. Like I said, if it isn't there, your material is rock hard. So I always pull the ends over so we don't have any rough parts on the patient because these can get really sharp and dig into your patient and create pressure sores. Um, there's multiple versions, but the inside is fiberglass and it's very sticky residue. So to get it to harden faster, we add water. The warmer the water, the, harder it fa uh, the faster it hardens. And this, um, some versions have padding on both sides like this does, some only has one side of padding. So the padded side always goes to the patient. All right, so for a normal um, wrist, we use three inches for an adult, two inches for a child. Um, this is gonna be a little big, but this is what we had. <laughs> I was like, the, it comes in four and five inch sizes also. All right, so we're going to get this wet. You don't need a ton of water, just a little bit. Once it's wet, you're going to wring it out. You want to keep the extra moisture in there because it creates pressure source. So 
So we've already assessed PMS before putting this on. So because this is going to go on his radius, I make a, a couple cuts to go uh, around the thumb easier. And it's okay if the splinting material is long, you just don't want it too short. And so I always start distally and go proximally. And you want to cover about half and go half of the length of your ace bandage. So if it's a little long, you just fold it over. It doesn't hurt the patient at all to fold over if it's a little long. And then you secure your splint and then you verify PMS after putting it in place. So because this is a splint, we don't put cast padding underneath because this doesn't allow for swelling. Um, we have stockinette instead that we can use some of that because that allows for swelling. So the problem with this is it doesn't stretch and it allow for swelling. So we tell patients that if they lose sensation, um, their fingers start turning blue, going numb, we take to loosen up the ACE bandage so the ACE bandage only allows for so much expansion, but it allows for expansion. So they'll take the ACE bandage off and they'll still feel numb and blue with this stuff on because this doesn't expand.